We reviewed Deepcool's first gaming mouse, the MC310, a couple of months ago, and we were really impressed with its looks, ergonomics, acceptable price tag, considering Deepcool's reputation for making quality products, yet unimpressed with its software, which signaled that they are still relatively new at the mice ecosystem. With that said, we have two new Deepcool mice to review today, the MG350 and the MG510 wireless gaming mice. I've been using each of them off and on for one month now, and the best part about Windows. Windows. options, prices. CDKeyOffers.com. order. Search for the software you need. Add to cart. Daan ka sa payment options nila. Wala pang five minutes. Finished! May legit working CD key ka na para sa Windows mo. Gamitin ng aming code para makakuha pa ng discounts. Kaya kung naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software, Check out cdkeyoffers.com Let's go through the ergonomics. Overall, design, look, lighting, reliability, customizability, and price of each of these. Starting off with the MG510, you'll find that the grip and overall ergonomics is very familiar to one's hand. I think anyone with either small or big hands will be able to feel comfortable with this. My hand is larger than most and find this to be a perfect fit for me. And because it's symmetrically designed, unlike the Corsair Wireless Iron Claw or even the MG350 for instance, which has this bump on the left side, I think this is a safe shape for most people looking for a gaming mouse that won't feel too new for them. A lot of people get turned off by mice with too complicated a grip. The minimalist design is attractive to me as it doesn't say too much branding, yet I like the subtle teal motif which all deep cool mice share. It has a nice rubber grip on the sides and all the buttons are easy to reach with the exception of course of the DPI button at the bottom. Something which irritates me when it comes to mouse design because you need to flip the mouse over in order to change the DPI and you would only be able to cycle in one direction. One big complaint I have in terms of design is the way Deepcool insisted on creating this unnecessary block which prevents you from using just any USB-C cable. The Corsair Harpoon did this too, and I don't see any practical value in forcing a person to use a specific USB-C cable. What if you lose it? Using a regular USB-C cable will give you trouble as it won't fit through this block. The MG350, however, is a much more compact mouse with an almost whale-like shape. I was very concerned that my big hand would protest at the lack of support when using it such as the Corsair Harpoon, which was really too small for my hand. Yet I found that because the shape juts upward and it's fat enough around the sides, it cradles my hand quite well. When a mouse is too small for me, my hand usually aches an hour after intense FPS use. I have yet to feel any fatigue when it comes to the MG350. The MG350's buttons are well placed and are comfortable to hold and press. They jut out tastefully rather than boastfully unlike other mice. I quite enjoy the shape and feel of this last button at the bottom actually. Thankfully, these two buttons on top allow me to change the sensitivity in both directions. When it comes to the MG510, the RGB is restricted to just the logo and one thin line at the bottom. You can do all the usual customizations for this. The MG350 on the other hand has lights on the scroll wheel and its logo, but importantly, you cannot change the colors. In fact, you are restricted to not just only this color, but only to the breathing effect and its static teal. This is a missed opportunity and it doesn't seem like a lot of money was saved by not making it full RGB. The biggest flaw in Deepcool Mice is that the software is not unified. For Razer, it is Synapse and for Corsair, it's IQ. However, Deepcool quite literally has a software for each mouse and to make things slightly weird is that even the interface is slightly different. I'm reviewing both mice, I had to download both programs which I'll put up now side by side. The icon placements are different. The button to apply the changes in the MG510 is to press to apply, while in the MG350 it is to press to confirm. Of course, while I understand that most people will not actually own more than one deep cool mouse, it is slightly strange that the same company seems to be treating each product as though it were very different from the other on a software level. Yet design-wise, they both share the same minimal black theme with the deep cool logo and teal shade at the bottom. In short, this doesn't seem very professional, a letdown considering that the mice perform brilliantly as mice. 
One other thing I would like to suggest for Deep Cool is to give the mice a real name and not something which appears to be a serial number. I have to look at the boxes for me to remember what each mouse is called because MG something just isn't memorable. Even if I hated my Corsair Harpoon, I can always at least recall its name quickly when I hate it. The MG510 and MG350 are both comfortable to use for work and play. If I were to pick which would be the most comfortable for FPS, it would be the MG510 because it is lighter and I prefer this symmetrical grip when playing FPS. I think, however, this is just personal preference. For RPGs and work, I prefer the MG350 because the bulge and extra buttons make it tailor fit to be a workhorse of long hours of usage which don't require too much fast-paced panning. The MG510 retails in the United States for $80, while locally here in the Philippines, some have started selling it for 3,500 pesos or a little bit more. The MG350 retails for $60 or around 3,370 pesos. These are not strictly budget mice, and there are a lot of mice to choose from within this price range. What I can say, however, is that if you ignore the software and the RGB and focus purely on the satisfaction of how the mice feel ergonomically and their overall reliability in the working and gaming environment, you'll be surprised on how easy it is to grow fond of them. We are giving the MG510 a 3.5 out of 5 star rating based on the fact that I never encountered any problems with its wireless nature and the automatic sleep function to preserve battery life is a great feature. As for the MG350, we are giving it a 2.5 out of 5 star rating because while it is comfortable and has great button placements, the fact that it is restricted to just a single color and two options for lighting changes makes it feel like an incomplete product, which is sad because it really is very comfortable to hold in the hand. In conclusion, just like my experience with the MC310, I am very impressed that Deep Cool can make not one but three mice which feel all very comfortable in my big hands. And I have a feeling that most people will be quite at home with them as well. Deepcool, however, should focus on unifying their My software into a single program while changing these names so that they are easily more identifiable. This is important because on just pure hardware and design, they are really great to use. But the anonymity of the product name might make it difficult for gamers to notice them in the first place. We want to give a special shout out to Christian Espinosa, Rafael James, ITX Addict, Ian Meru, Liam Magnai, and John Ruben Ochia. Thank you so much for your continued support for more than a year. You guys are just freaking awesome. Thank you and let us know if you want us to embark on a specific kind of content other than what we already have.